Greetings Builders, Daniel here and welcome to the part 2 of my 12 week starter builds for the Necropolis League. If you missed part 1, don't worry, you can find it linked together with the POBs and complete guides for all those builds in the video description. And if this video helps you, please, leave a thumbs up to support the channel. Thank you very much and let's get into it! Let's start with another build for the Totem Lovers out there, the Freezing Pulse Totem's Hierophant with their Templar class. Totem builds are the first choice for many players because you can clear a lot of the game's content with very low investment, and the gameplay is super easy. This build here is no different, we use the Freezing Pulse skill on many Totems for a great clear speed and sweet to Ice Spear on bosses for the incredible boss damage. To list the pros of this build I would start with how cheap and easy it is. Totem builds are very safe because you just need to summon them and they will do all the hard work while you wait behind in safety. Because of that, totem builds are great to clear high tier content with low grade gear. Above all, with this build you can use Ice Spear totems for boss fights which grants a huge amount of single target damage. Now to list the cons, I start saying that since Freezing Pulse uses projectiles, obstacles can be a real pain for your clear speed, but everything will be ok if you keep repositioning your totems when needed. Another issue is that this build doesn't have access to evasion or spell suppression, but don't worry, as mentioned before, totem builds are very safe and if you mind your position, it will be hard for you to die. As for budget, you can get it destroying early end game maps with only around 35 chaos. To comfort but advance to yellow maps, you need to invest around 90 chaos and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 3 divides, but you can totally do it with less. Don't forget that on poebuilds.net you can find a list with all the equipment that you need to buy for this build, with direct links for examples being sold by other players. This build needs 3 mandatory unique items, but they are normally very cheap and easy to get. The first one is the Soul Mental Armor, that causes socketed gems to be supported by a level 20 spell totem. This grants us an extra support skill gem. We also need a Kikazaru Ring to counter the effect of curses. This is because the side effect of Soul Mantle that will apply a random curse on you whenever a totem dies. Finally, we also need a Self Flagellation Jewel that grants up to 20% increased damage for each curse on you. Thanks to Soul Mantle, you'll be always with around 9 curses, resulting on 180% increased damage. For clear speed, I'll give it 8 out of 10. You can summon 4 totems firing lots of freezing pulse projectiles with high cast speed. I just took 2 points out because you need to keep resummoning your totems all the time, and if they are behind any obstacles, the projectiles won't be able to hit enemies. The boss damage is incredible and deserves 10 out of 10. With this build, we can easily replace the freezing pulse with ice spears on big bosses for a lot more single target damage. For the survivability, I'll give it 9 out of 10. As a totem build, you always be far from action while your totems do all the work, so if you know how to mind your position, you can easily complete high tier maps with low grade gear. Above all, this build still counts with high armor and high block chance. Next we have the super fast and strong Flicker Strike Slayer with the Duelist class. This build uses Terminus S to sustain the frames charges needed for you to keep flickering, it's a great and simple Flicker Strike build for beginners. To use the pros of this build, I would have to start with its clear speed. Look at that, this is just insanely fast. It also counts with an awesome boss damage and instant life reach. And of course, flicker builds are just super cool. Now, to list the cons, I would start with the fact that you are always very close to enemies, which puts you in a vulnerable position. Another issue is that you have little control over your character, making it hard on bosses where you need to mind your position or attack the right enemy. As for budget, you can get it destroying early in game maps with only around 80 chaos. To comfortable advance to yellow maps, you need to invest around 120 chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 4 divines. You need only one mandatory unique item for this build, the Terminus S Sword that keeps your frenzy charges up even while flickering. For clear speed, this build is surely a 10 out of 10. And I don't even need to say anything, just take a look at the gameplay and you have to agree with me. The boss damage is great and deserves 9 out of 10. This build can easily deal many millions of damage per second, it's just great to kill big bosses like that. Now for this survival build I'd only give it 8 out of 10, even though this build still has almost 100,000 effective HP because of high armor, evasion and spell suppression. I had to take 2 points out for the same reason as I did with the Cyclone Slayer. 
Since you're always very close to enemies, you're always in a vulnerable position. And that's it for today guys! Have you already chosen your favorite starter build for the Necropolis League? Please don't forget to tell me in the comments and leave a thumbs up to support the channel. I wish you guys an amazing day and don't forget to keep building!